Hey guys, it is Tyler back once again with another Assassin's Creed Top 5 Moments video, this time in Assassin's Creed 3. I've now finished my semester at uni, so I've got a bit of a break for the next month and a bit, so I'm going to be doing back to regular uploads. So quite a few times a week, hopefully get back to it starting next week, but we'll begin with this video, so I'm very excited to get back into it. I'm also a bit <coughs> uh, sick right now. And losing my voice, so I'm going to try my best to do this, but getting sick isn't going to stop me from returning to YouTube because I've been so excited to get back into the routine since I finished my last exams, assignments, and all that stuff with uni. So, very exciting. Without further ado, guys, let's start this top five video. At number five, it is Haytham versus Connor. So, this is the battle of father and son that finally happened. I believe it was sequence 11 of the game where Connor infiltrated this fort in New York to try to find Charles Lee but in the end Charles Lee had left and Haytham was there because he knew it was a trap and these two finally battled it out the only disappointing part of this moment was the fact that Connor was so groggy and you had this like screen effect over it the whole time but other than that like it was a big build up to this moment you played as Haytham for so much at the start of the game you got attached to Haytham and because of that it made it just more impactful as a villain to have to battle him if you'd call Haytham a villain some may call Connor the villain that's just a matter of perspective with this uh, very uh, polarizing game that you either love or you hate and it was a very entertaining battle nonetheless with a great speech from Haytham at the end where Haytham looks to kill his son and you I wasn't sure if he could do it but then Connor I mean, I don't know why you'd leave an assassin when you know he has wrist blades with his arms at the ready and he just hidden blades him right in the neck and that's that and Haytham gives this speech. I love this speech from Haytham because he stays true to his character that's like, hey, I'm not apologizing for what, I'm, what I've done and I'm not saying you're right, but good job, I'm proud of you in a certain way. At number four, Achilles agrees to train Connor. Now, this is a cool moment. So you're just starting to get to know Connor a little bit, and he's very naive at this stage. So he's quite an entertaining little guy at this point, and he's so naive and learning all this stuff and very stubborn because he won't take no for an answer. He knows what his destiny is to become an assassin. And Achilles finally, after Connor defends the homestead from these invaders, Achilles is like, alright, you've got some you've got some guts. You got some strong will, I'll train you. And you have this very interesting speech from Achilles who talks about the assassins and the histories and kind of tries to understand who Connor is. And it's this kind of cool little moment they have at the fireplace and you see the shanty little homestead manor that's obviously not looked after very well. Then you get a look at the robes that you know Connor's eventually going to get. And as well, you get a look at this Templar wall that we know now is a group of these Templars that... Achilles has seen a couple times before if you've played Assassin's Creed Rogue, so very interesting to see the setup of this character, Connor becoming an assassin and the goals he has. At number three is Achilles' death. Now, this is a really sad moment because to me the best part of Assassin's Creed 3 is certainly the homestead missions. And as a climax to those homestead missions, you get this scene where Achilles passes away. So it's a really sad moment because these guys had a tough love-hate relationship at times, Connor and Achilles, but they both loved and admired and respect each other a lot, and you see the letter from Achilles, and then later on, if you go back to the gravesite, you see a speech from Connor. It's one of the very most emotional and touching moments of the game, and it was just a great climax to such a great story arc that was the Homestead Missions, you know, uh, most of you know this is my least favorite Assassin's Creed game. Most of you know that I'm not a fan, a huge fan of Connor. And this is definitely the highlight point of the game for him in terms of a story arc, getting to have him be a bit more chilled out in the homestead sense. And to see what Achilles meant to the Assassins, meant to these group of people, what he meant to Connor, and in turn what Achilles saw in Connor and things like that. It's a nice touching moment to see the scene of funeral, the death scene, and then you get to see Connor afterwards go back to the gravesite and give his thoughts. At number two is Desmond 
infiltrating Abstergo. Such an epic moment for the modern day. Probably the best modern day mission there's been in an Assassin's Creed game itself. Now, I felt like the modern day in this was just a bit rushed. It was really fun, but it was just... There was so much and so many years of build-up to this, and it felt like they just kind of threw this mission at you. But, it doesn't take away, if you just look at it as a standalone mission, hella fun. You get to see Daniel Cross again, infiltrating the Abstergo base you escaped from in Assassin's Creed 2, and that you spent Assassin's Creed 1 in seeing the Animus Room you were in, fighting Daniel Cross, and then chasing down that son of a bitch, Warren Vidic, and with the apple, and you see just a few little character moments. Sure, Daniel Cross wasn't done amazingly, but you at least get to see some of the interesting lore aspects of him and the, you know, first set voices in his head, and he goes all crazy, and Desmond's like, well, this is convenient, I'm gonna go kill him now. And then getting the head through, trying to chase Vidic because he has your father, gonna just roughhouse all these Abstergo agents, and in the end, getting to take down Vidic in just one of the most satisfying ways, where he's like, all right, give me the apple, this is mine, I've won, and you're like, yeah, totally, bro, and then you're like, no, nope, fuck you, I know how to use this apple, and you get his own people to shoot him, and he's like, no, 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 please, and then you just get everyone to shoot each other, and you just walk the hell out of there with your dad, holding the apple, taking everyone down, it's just an epic moment to finish these Templars off and beat them. At number one, a very interesting scene, and it's Hatham speaks the truth, is what I like to call it. It's one of the my favorite moments in all the Assassin's Creed games. An amazing speech from Hatham. It's one of the reasons I love the game, and it's one of the reasons I hate the game. Because it's a reason I don't like Connor, or at least I found it hard to relate to Connor, because I thought Hatham was the good guy, I thought he was the real protagonist, he had ideas that made sense, He and Connor didn't quite understand certain things, and it was just tough for me. Hatham says it best. Time was. The Assassins professed a far more sensible goal. That of peace. Freedom is peace. Oh no. It's an invitation to chaos. It showed the things that Connor needed to work on. Now, it didn't necessarily mean Connor was a bad character from this, but because he didn't seem to learn from things like this, it just didn't resonate with me, because I thought they were setting up some really important learning points with Connor, but he never really learned it. Maybe if he had another game, he could have, but Hatham made such good points about freedom and peace and what that really means. <laughs> it seems your tongue has tasted sour grapes. The people have made their choice, and it was Washington. People chose nothing. It was done by a group of privileged cowards seeking only to enrich themselves. They convened in private and made a decision that would benefit them. Oh, they might have dressed it up with pretty words. That does not make it true. Now, that was such an amazing point he made. And it doesn't just resonate with this exact battle with Assassin's Templars. It resonates with modern politics and religion. And it talks about how you think. You think things are done one way, but the way people can talk and address things, it doesn't necessarily make it true. And your perspective of, you know, the Founding Fathers, you know, they, you know, it was the people that chose Washington. The Hatham's like, look, let's not try to romanticize what it was. It was a bunch of rich guys that got together and decided something that would benefit them in the end. And they said it was the people that chose it, you know. It's just one of those things, does it mean they're bad? Does it mean they're good? Not necessarily, but it just was such a clear, realistic way to look at the world. And it's a speech that resonates with me now in real life. It's a speech that resonated with me in the game, and it made me love Hatham so much as a good guy. And it was like, oh, I should be playing as this guy. He's the guy that makes sense, has good ideas. Sure, the Templars can be bad. Sometimes they can be good. But his concepts of the world made sense, and I can relate to what he's trying to say, even if I don't agree with his methods of doing so. Whereas Connor, I'm like, Connor, you need to learn and maybe change the way and do it the assassin way to get freedom to get peace. It's not necessarily just about freedom. You know, I, I could talk about that speech a lot because it's one of my favorite all-time moments of, of any Assassin's Creed game. But f maybe for the wrong reasons in terms of moments because this is my least favorite Assassin's Creed game and that scene did make me not like the character Connor so much, which isn't what I was supposed to do. But that's what it did at the end of the day. But it made me love hate them and by God, it's a very polarizing game assassin's creed 3 and a very polarizing scene that number one in my opinion let me know what you guys think in the comments below 
potentially people that love this game may not like my list too much, they may not like my ideas of it, but you know what? I don't give a shit. These are my opinions, this is what I think of Assassin's Creed 3. Most of you already know this anyway, you know this is my favourite game. Uh, but that's my top 5 this time. We'll move on to Assassin's Creed Black Flag for my next top 5, but hopefully back next week with just some other new videos. Assassin's Creed The Truth's going to be returning, hopefully maybe next week or the week after starting Assassin's Creed 2 playthrough, plus heaps of other videos, might do some Watch Dogs 2 stuff, who knows. But I'm back, everybody, I'm very excited to be back, and I will see you guys in the next one.